Hello, uh, my name is Matt Inton, and this is my ALU project. All of this is done in VHDL and on the Basis 3 board here. Um, so starting from the left, we'll be using uh, most of these switches and LEDs down here. The two over here are uh, two four-bit inputs, uh, A and B. We have got the four LEDs, seven down to uh, three here. No, seven down to four, excuse me, which correspond to these values and the three switches to the right, which will be our command switches. That lets us switch through the different processes. Um, there will be eight total, four arithmetic and four Boolean. The output will be these four LEDs to the right here. Um, that will just display the value we're looking for. So starting with the switches at zero, that is just A plus B. Uh, zero plus zero has obviously tripped this flag here. Uh, going down the line, we have 1 plus 0, which is 1. 1 plus 1, we'll read 2. Uh, 3 plus 1 is 4. We get to 7 plus 1. And um, the value reads as signed, so that would be negative 8. But uh, obviously, positive 7 plus positive 1, we know is positive 8. Uh, adding two positive values, you'd never get a negative which is why our uh, overflow flag has tripped. Uh, but uh, the negative has as well. Here, let me, looks a little odd. It's a bit better. But yeah, the negative and overflow flag is tripped. Uh, because overflow is, uh, we can see overflow, we can ignore negative there. Uh, let's see here. Let's go positive, or negative one plus positive one. The answer is zero, that flag is tripped, which is good. And we can see that this is four uh, ones. It's a bit tough in the video, but um, we can see it's four ones. Adding anything to it will cause everything to roll over and uh, the carry out uh, will trip because of that. Um, it will do that if we add negative two plus two, uh, same two flags have tripped. Uh, we do negative three plus three, same two flags. Um, so let's go ahead and go to subtraction. There we go. And we do one minus one. We can see that, uh, like in the last example, the same exact flags are lit up. Um, the reason you w it doesn't seem like the carryout would trip, but the reason it does is because it subtracts through two's complement. Uh, we have three zeros and a one. It's gonna invert all of that and then add one to it. So uh, that will cause everything to roll over and the carry out flag has tripped. Uh, let's see here. Could do maybe five minus two. Uh, the carry out will stay lit up for the exact same reason, but uh, we can see that it is three. If we do, let's try negative eight minus one, uh, negative eight minus one is the same as negative eight plus negative one. Um, adding two negatives, you would never expect to see a positive value. Um, our overflow flag has tripped and that's because it's displaying, it looks like a positive seven value. Um, we also see our carry out has um, tripped and because overflow has gone off here, we need to look at carry out. Uh, if we take carry out into account, that would be the fifth place that would read as a negative 16. You add seven to that and you get negative nine. Um, that, that's the way the unsigned works, or the signed, excuse me. So uh, negative nine there, and obviously negative eight minus one is also negative nine. Let's go ahead and go to the next process. Hopefully that wasn't confusing. Um, Let's see, so the next process is just the A plus one function here. Um, we can see that everything is set to zero on A, so it is displaying one, and going down the line, when we have one, we get two. If we go three, we get four. Uh, let's see, six, we get seven. So once we go to seven, just like in our first example, uh, overflow and negative have tripped. Uh, Positive seven plus one will be positive eight. Um, it's gonna read as negative eight. But because overflow has tripped, we can ignore the negative. Let's see here. 
negative one plus one, uh, obviously zero has tripped, and adding one to the four ones here will cause everything to roll over. Carry out is tripped as well. So let's go to the next process, which will be the last arithmetic process, and that is A times B. Um, because we're multiplying a 4-bit by a 4-bit, it'll look a little weird. Um, we need an 8-bit output, um, so we had to use 7 down to 0. Um, for now, we can ignore these as flags, uh, just read it all as one data out value. Um, so let's see, 0 times 0 is obviously 0, which is good. Uh, we're not displaying anything. Uh, we've got 1 times 0, which will be 0 still. 1 times 1 has given us a 1. Uh, 1 times 3, 3. 3 times 3 has given us a 9 over here. Uh, let's try 10 times 10. So 10 times 10 has given us a, it's the 64 there. 64 plus 32 is 96, plus 4 is 100. 10 times 10 is 100. Um, if we turn every value that we get to the highest, if we do all ones, we get 128 plus 64, which is 192, plus 32, which is 224, and then plus 1, which is 225. 15 times 15, 225. Um, let's go to our first Boolean process, which is the AND gate. Um, we can see that we have four one values here for the LED. Um, the AND gate will only display a one on its output if both input values are one. So we can see that for if any, oh, excuse me. If for any of these bits we change it to a zero, uh, the output will shut off. So off, off. And uh, the same will work uh, the opposite way. If we do it on B, shut off any of those, the output will turn to zero there. Uh, our next process will be the OR gate. So OR gate will display, oh, we can ignore the zero value for all of the Boolean stuff here. But um, let's see here. OR gate will display a one if a, uh, any bit on A is a 1, any bit on B is a 1, or if both are 1s. So uh, setting, let's set everything on A to 1. We can see that everything lights up. If we do the same with B, everything lights up. And if we alternate, so A will have off, on, off, on, and B will be on, off, on, off. And we can see that because they alternate and it's an OR gate, everything is lit up. Uh, going to our next Boolean process here will be the exclusive OR gate. This will only display a 1 if the values of A and B are different. And again, because they alternate, everything uh, is lit up over here, or has lit up over here. Um, if we make them the same here, so uh, B is on, off, on, off. If we make A match that, we can see that no value has uh, lit up, even though there are uh, several one values in there. Uh, so finally, we will go to our last process, which is just not A. Uh, if we set everything to zero, we can see that all of our values have been inverted over this way. Um, as we switch all the values to one on A, all of our output values switch to zero. So just a basic inverter there for the last one. But um, that would be all eight processes of the uh, ALU here. And uh, thank you for watching. Hello, uh, just a quick update on the ALU project here. Uh, we've been asked to implement an older project within this, which was the even rod detector and the prime number detector. So uh, I've gone ahead and done so. Uh, we've replaced the A++ command, which just added 1 to whatever uh, A's value was. But, uh, let's see, we are working with LEDs 2, 1, and 0. Um, respectively, that lets us know if the number is even, odd, or prime. Uh, but going down the line, we are working with uh, A set to 0. 
uh, trips the zero flag, which is good, and is shown as even. One will be odd. Two will be our first prime number and our only even prime number, or one of our two even prime numbers. We've got three, four, five, six, and finally we've got seven. So um, we are working in signed binary going from negative eight to seven instead of unsigned, which would be zero to 15. Um, so our next number would be negative eight. Uh, I had to do some Googling about just to see um, if there were negative prime numbers and got uh, mixed results about 50-50. Uh, half the website said there's no such thing as a negative prime number, which is within its definition. Uh, the other half said that there absolutely was as you got more and more complicated. Um, it really depends on what you're looking for. I went ahead and went with the second version. Uh, they said that the negative prime numbers were the exact same as the positives, just a uh, flip sign. Um, if it turns out that the first case is true, it's a super quick and easy fix, but um, I've gone ahead and implemented it the second way. So uh, going down the line, we have negative eight, and we can see that the negative flag is tripped. So is the even, but uh, no prime, of course. We've got negative seven, which will trip our prime flag. Uh, negative six, negative five, negative four, negative three, our final prime, which is negative two, negative one, and that will all bring us back to zero, which again trips the flag. But uh, that has been the even, odd, uh, and prime detector implemented within the ALU. Uh, thank you for your time again.